कॉपी और विड्रा करके आपको उसमें भेज दो हाँ कर दो All right, we can probably go ahead and get started while he gets settled. Um, uh, public comment, I don't know if we have anybody that wants to share anything uh, to that effect. Um, Ellen, is Ellen still here? Um, Ellen, do you have anything to share? I am here and no, I do not. I am, I am here to listen. Thank you though. Great, thanks for being here. Any other folks with uh, stuff for public comment? All right, seeing none, um, we can probably get started. Um, I'll, I'll hold on minutes uh, while we wait for Jay to get connected. Um, but I did wanna introduce um, our new social media uh, team. Uh, Javeria uh, from uh, Admark Digital uh, is, is on the call. I wanted to um, have her come and meet everybody, introduce herself and sort of talk about, you know, plans for, for upcoming content calendar for the on divine social media. Um, so um, if, you're, if you're there um, and able to, uh, just unmute, introduce yourself, and I can stop screen sharing if you have stuff that you want to screen share. Just let me know. Hello, everyone. This is Javeria. I hope you can all hear me. Yep. All right. So should I start telling me, uh, telling you guys about our primary goals right now? Sure. Okay. All right, sure. so we'll be starting from February in order to promote the businesses at the Vaughan area. We are a South Asian marketing agency um, promoting businesses and growing them since 2013. We have, um, we pretty much know the industry well enough. Uh, we already have um, um, more than 30 plus clients in this industry. We know the niche, how it is working. And uh, currently we are actually doing um, social media marketing for many of the businesses um, on Devon um, Street already. So we pretty much knew what our plan is. As for the primary goal, we are looking to promote local businesses which deal with customers. The goal is here, the goal here is to make on demand face and voice of the businesses which you know are really here online. And we plan we plan to introduce the business through our visuals, through a you know storytelling um, way, but also give it a you know a cultural flair as well to make it more interesting. And um, since Devon is a pretty much, you know, um, diverse um, group of businesses. We have uh, different kind of shops uh, for shopping of uh, jewelry, clothing, and a lot of different foods um, and, you know, other possibilities. So we're trying to, you know, integrate everything culturally and promote the businesses. So this is our plan primarily to make it a, you know, a destination for not only for people who live in Illinois, but out of state people as well. Um, our first uh, uh, task is going to be, you know, promote businesses in a suburb area where they already have South Asian businesses, but we want them again to come back and revisit Devon with, you know, it's diverse offering through dining, shopping, and, you know, different activities. Does anyone have any questions or anything that they'd like to share with uh, with your area while she's here? Yeah, how, how are you going to advertise that? It, it didn't seem like you gave any details on what you're, you're saying, how you're going to target people. What's what's the process or way you're going to do it? So when we uh, target is also based on what businesses are here on Devon. So we, um, since we're already working with clients like, you know, um, Bundu Khan and Sabri and, and Usmania, just to name a few, we know our target market pretty well. We know how many people visit on Devon. We promoted businesses such as Jao Lucas as well throughout their you know, media campaign and in the digital marketing. So we know pretty much the niche, who to market and where to market. Um, marketing and ad budget also depending how many dollars are provided to us. So 
our current budget is around $400, I think $500 per month. Between, um, we will be using this budget to promote, uh, you know, Devon area, the businesses and the, you know, whatever's, whatever happening in the area, along with our, you know, organic reach. So this is the plan. How do you, how do you measure success? We will measure the success once we run the ad and you can see the ROI in the reports. Everything is, I mean, uh, since we haven't started yet, so we cannot give you the major success right now. You can ask me this question, I mean, a month later, maybe. Hello, Javier, Janet here. Hi, Janet, how are you? Assalamu alaikum. Good, Assalamu Um So yes, um, I, I, I can vouch um, as far as my success rate goes, as far as marketing goes. Um, you know, they, had a, they did a phenomenal job. I compared them with two other companies that I used to work with before. Um, so yeah, they do a phenomenal job as far as online presence goes, your Google ads, your, you know, Facebook, your, you know, even on just Google My Business, they did a great job on that. So, I mean, they do all these postings and stuff for us and multiple restaurants on, and businesses on Devon Avenue. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm one of those customers of theirs that um, feels very happy with what they brought to my table. Thank you so much for, you know, um, for your comments and, you know, your review for us, Janet. Really appreciate it. Is there anybody else have any questions? All right, no. Um, if, if anyone thinks of anything or has anything, you know, uh, else to share or events or, or promotions that they'd like to try and get on the on Devon social media, um, definitely send that stuff through through me. Um, I'll be sharing it with with Anna to to get to to Harry and her team. Um, they're working on content calendar for us now for the month of February. Um, so we should have that, I think, pretty soon, right? Um, and we can sort of, you know, share that and modify as needed. But um, but yeah, if, if nobody else has any other questions, um, you're welcome to stay um, if you want to. Um, we do have some other folks joining us. Um, I see Melissa's here from Big Buzz to talk through events with us. Um, I was going to rearrange the agenda and sort of put that first so she doesn't have to stay the whole time. Um, but you're very, you're welcome to stay if you want. Um, but if not, you, you can feel free to go at this point. Oh, well, if, if I'm not needed anymore, then I would probably going to exit the meeting. Yeah. Uh, if anything that, you know, applied towards our uh, responsibility, please let us know via email. You can send me the summary. I would love to, you know, go over it. And if anybody has any questions that you can forward me through Cindy or anybody who's taking care from your end. And we, will look, we would, you know, we'd look forward to working with you guys and promote, you know, uh, on the one as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to add for to the question about how we're going to measure success. I would say for the first quarter or the first six months, we are going to be looking at metrics. So we're going to look, be looking at our audience uh, engagement and also our growth. So we are going to be looking at how many likes and follows and hearts and how many comments and engagement we get. Um, and that will tell us if the if the if the strategy is working. So that will be, and then our criteria will change as the campaigns and as the social media continues to grow. But at the beginning, those are the things that we're looking at: engagement and audience growth. So at the end of every month, since we will start, you will be getting a monthly a detailed report, which will tell you everything from how your page has grown, how many engagement did you get, how many client, you know. Uh, uh, client productivity you have received you can you can see the growth of your audience since I have, have taken over the page I've seen a lot of things which I don't want to audit right now here because this page has been established from over 2017 and the audience has been stagnant and I think this is something that we've discussed at previously as well you guys on the one has been stuck to almost I think um, less than 500 follower on your Instagram and I think um maybe like 1200 or 1700 total in your Facebook, which is like if I see as a growth, which is pretty much nothing to me. But again, saying that we would not be, it's not like a bullet that we will throw out and it will give you will give you results right away we have to work we are we will be working closely with the businesses on devon we will be creating the organic reach as as much as you know paid uh, paid reach as well for um the way how we measure success is not 
uh, growing page like is one aspect, but for us also, as discussed earlier, making businesses to Devon Avenue businesses is a major target in terms of bringing people on foot because uh, liking a page is another thing and visiting and giving the businesses to the, to the business is a totally different thing. I think we are hired not only to promote on the one page, but to promote business as well. So our focus is, you know, um, is two way, not only to grow the page likes and organ I mean, organically page growth, it is one thing, but in order to, you know, grow businesses, you have to work, you know, collaboration on the businesses on demand. You have to showcase their story and what they actually wanted to sell to their customers as well. Because if the customers are not coming on demand, having a page, cannot do anything much further on that. So this is my thing. Let us, you know, work on to our current strategy and you can look through it in, you know, in three months and so forth. Thanks. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna leave now. So yeah. you guys have a happy, bye. Great, thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, bye. All right, um, so like I said, I think we'll, we'll jump around a little bit in the agenda. So we'll, we'll circle back um, for, you know, approval of the minutes and, and some of these other update items that we can sort of do at the end. But since Melissa is here from Big Buzz, um, I wanted to sort of jump uh, up to the 2022 events and dates uh, sort of section um, so that she can share with us um, the research she's done and proposal that she's put together for the um, Tuk Tuk uh, art uh, exhibition project that Pete had proposed um, that we had asked them to, to research and put a, a proposal together. Um, Melissa, I don't know if you if it makes more sense for you to try and screen share or if I should try to pull up uh, what you'd sent with me. Uh, if you want to give me permission, I do have the uh, images kind of front and center because I thought people might want to see that <clears throat> for reference. Yeah, let me do that. So I'll take the agenda off right quick and I will make you a host so that you can screen share. All right, you should be good to go. Excellent. So, all right, good. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, it is nice to see some familiar folks and uh, nice to meet some new ones. Uh, but based on your request for this Tuk Tuk project, we did embark on the research and found a company called Orlandi Statuary who was involved with the Cows on Parade exhibition in Chicago. And so they, they gave us a couple of different options. And as we were looking at this, um, you know, we kind of tried to find some online images to give them an idea of what we might start to look for and to try to ballpark this in and narrow this down. We chose to take the front of the tuk-tuk in it with a stand so that people could do photos and it would be a photo opportunity and it would be a way to kind of manage the expense kind of leverage the real estate on the sidewalk, but try to find places along Devon Avenue and the entire SSA route where we could potentially display 10 of these pieces is what we're proposing that we start with. We could certainly do more, we could do less um, based on your ultimate desire, but we thought 10 would just spread out through the, the district very nicely. They have a couple of different options. Um, they have a hand sculpted mold that is professionally sculpted, but it's not as not as precise as the computer generated model. So for our budget estimate on this project, we have um, gone with the computer generated mold that is more exact precision so that the base pieces for all of these would be more identical. And we estimated again, 10 um, just as a starting point. The, there's a one-time mold fee that does go with this um, particular project, and then the per piece cost would be $500 um, to $600 per piece, and the approximate piece size is going to be three to four feet wide and uh, about four feet high. They do come with a base um, that would then um, estimates that the individual piece would weigh between 30 and 50 pounds, and then they would be adding 120 pound sandbags during the installation. The weighted base would allow for children to be able to step up onto the piece um, and look through the windshield, which makes this more interactive and more of that, that visual element that we want so people can engage with it and do photos. The pieces are primed and ready for um, painting and finishing. And so then our, our goal would be to enlist 
you know, whether it be local businesses or local artists, we would want to work with the commissioners to identify the how we want to have them decorated. Um, and just as when we've worked with you in the past, kind of introducing us to the business owners so we could potentially work with them. Or if we know artists that we want to, um, you know, assign each one of these two, we can do that as well. I did include in the budget proposal that there would be a final sign on the each tuk tuk that would say, you know, who the artist was or who the business was that designed it and highlight the SSA. And then um, we estimated that we would want to give potentially a $500 budget to each of the artists to buy paint and supplies and encourage the artists to do, you know, this is where it gets innovative, right? Like the cows really kind of ran a pretty wide gamut for what the the designs looked like. And so we thought that it could really ap appeal to different people, different cultures, and just all kinds of artistic impressions um, to make them more interesting. Also along with that, um, what we were looking at is, um, so it takes six to eight weeks for each one of the, for the pieces to be created. So if we were able to sign on, our thought was that then we could start planning right away, be able to get the pieces in production and kind of tie in so that potentially in April, the pieces would go out to their locations on Devon and we would be able to enlist the assistance of the PR company to really start to capture then when the artists were gonna be out there to design their pieces and kind of allow for like four weeks for the artists to be able to go out and design the pieces and finish those products and then have it be a culmination of a, an, a weekend in May where we would kind of do the unveiling of the tuk-tuks and potentially rent a tuk-tuk service. There is one here in Chicago that would come out to Devon Avenue and for, you know, a defined period of time, the thought was that then they could give tuk-tuk rides up and down Devon Avenue from one end to the other and just really make more of a visual spectacle out of that to unveil the tuk-tuks and make it a destination point for the weekend. Um, we would want to work with the alderman's office in the city of Chicago to make sure we confirm and secure any licensing. And then I did build into the budget um, the possibility of, you know, on basic print, um, printing of posters and postcards um, with some residential distribution. And I would really look at the idea of being able to try to take that distribution out to maybe um, surrounding communities like Lincoln Woods, Skokie, you know, or what have you to try to expand the reach of this particular project. Um, and then we could, we would potentially be able to have them installed for the rest of this, the year. So that then also you guys, as you're doing your movie nights and other items, that these continue to be an ongoing engagement item where people might come and, and interact with the pieces. Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, you said it's four feet high. Yes. Yeah. Seems kind of short, doesn't it? I, I, I don't. Know, I feel like it. It does. Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I have to. I, I can't picture it. Uh, so we we absolutely can make them any dimensions you want. Just knowing that um, as we were looking at a lot of. Uh, production processes and trying to manage the cost of something of this nature. Uh, we were trying to choose a size and dimension that would be what we thought maybe most manageable. But if we absolutely wanted to narrow it and heighten it, like we can certainly take back anything that you okay. would like adjusted and we're open to do that. We were simply trying to kind of get some baseline information into you guys and then we can adjust as you desire. Oh, great. I wonder if there's any way we can uh, have a tuk-tuk parade to kick it off. What do you think that would look like? Would it be uh, like homemade tuk-tuks that maybe people could kind of... Uh... Well, in my fantasy, it would be, uh, uh, yes, like just very ornate, you know, decorated tuk-tuk. Like these guys in Osmania across the street from me, it's uh, pretty amazing. So, uh, and just, uh, or people self decorate would be best. If we had our different artists uh, decorating each 
fun and then have a parade of those and then judge them. That was my, you know, pie in the sky idea. But uh, I, I, I like the cows on parade concept too. I know you mentioned talking to the alderman, um, but just make sure you do that so that you have all the right permits for that because you're going to be on the public way. So we want to make sure that you're doing everything right. Absolutely. I hope I'm not the only one that, that finds this fun and exciting. Does anyone have to be the only one here that's getting giggles out of this? I I, I think, uh, Janet here, I think that's pretty cool, guys. Yeah, I think if we do it right, it'll bring attention to Devon, and that, that's what we really need. I like it. This is Jay. Thanks. Um, Melissa, do you ha did you have the, um, I remember if it was on this sheet or if it was another sheet where you had the uh, budget. Um, are you able to pull that up real quick? just to sort of show people where we're at on that? Absolutely. Also, I'm sorry if I may add, uh, my, my original thought was that like, separate businesses could sponsor a tuk tuk, um, but it doesn't have to be that. It was just one of just spitballing. Yeah, I think that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let Melissa speak to, to that some more, but I think too, the idea was that you know, there, there is some opportunity for like businesses to sort of be responsible for, for helping to get them decorated and, and things like that, at least like the stationary sculpture kind of ones. Um, as far as the, you know, actual mobile tuk-tuks that would be in the street, I, I'm, I think we only identified like the one company, right, that actually has like the electric tuk-tuks that, that you can ride around in. And those all kind of look the same. So I, I don't know what kind of opportunities there'd be to, to get decorated ones of those um, for a parade, but it's it's it maybe an idea worth exploring. Well, for one, I'm willing to buy one for Carrie's Lounge and it'll be right cruising up and down to my name. I'm telling you that right now. I love that, Pete. Um, and I do think that the company that um, comes out, they do have like some signage options and like some, I, some, I, I, you know, I think it's a conversation. I mean, I think that, you know, we, we could easily dive into that a little bit more um, to kind of think about what it could look like or invite others to, you know, get their own tuk-tuk and, and design it and bring it. Um, I, I think, you know, the, I love the enthusiasm and the excitement. I think it's fun. I think it's different. I think that um, my biggest concern as we kind of think through these pieces is just often trying to get the participation has been the hardest. And so, you know, ideally I would love to have the different businesses kind of sponsor these and own one and like be that, you know, take responsibility for the decorating, happy to work with the commissioners to get the introductions on the people we, we might want to tap for that. In the past, I just know trying to build up the involvement has been the hardest piece. So I think if the commission has ideas and can help with that piece of it, I, I think we could certainly do a lot of fun things around kind of the activation. And I do think that there's signage on the um, electric vehicles that a business could sponsor them or they could have different, you know, I could see what they're willing to do around that design option too. That makes sense. And maybe businesses will would would be willing to jump in once they see it's underway. So what, what, if we get one going, get something like this going, they see it doing well and successful, they'll want, they'll want to attach their name to it. Yeah. So we've we've got sort of the 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 proposed budget um, that Melissa put together um, on the screen now. So we're at, at thirty three thousand eight hundred. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a not insignificant amount of money, but it, it doesn't eat the entire budget category for special events. There, there is still, you know, money left over um, to do some of the other things that we had talked about with movie nights and, and some of the other types of things. Um, so I, I wanted to, to make sure that everybody has this information and it was emailed around on Friday as well. Um, but, you know, because, you know, we're, we're looking at you know, sort of a spring kickoff for this, it's important that if we are going to do it, that that we get, 
you know, a vote to approve. So I wanted to make sure that everybody had the information, could ask any questions today um, that, that folks may have so that we can sort of give some guidance as to whether we're moving forward with it. So the floor is open. If somebody wanted to make a motion, that would also be fine. A motion to what exactly? To approve? To, the, to approve moving forward with this as presented at this budget. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'll make that motion. I second Pete's motion. All in favor? Any nays? Anybody? Aye. 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 Great. All right. So that's one, two, three, four, five in favor. Great. All right. Thanks very much for that. Um, and then Melissa, if you could stay on for a second, could you could you stop screen sharing so that I can put the agenda back up? I can. I'd like to ask one question because uh, they did talk about the dimensions and the sizing. So yeah. are we interested in going taller and uh, reviewing what that what we can get done on the budget with for that? Yeah, Melissa, let's do you know what the in. size okay. of an actual one is? Mm -hmm. I don't. That is a great question. Yeah, maybe we should find that out and try to go closer to that. Well, you could you could just go across the street. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just the one in front of his mania. <laughs> you could just measure it. In fact, if you guys hold still, I'll run across the street. And run, Pete, run. I'm run not going too. anywhere. I swear to God. <laughs> I can go do it. It won't take a minute. Yeah, yeah. be careful. I'm, I'm Don't going. get hit. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'll be right back. I love the excitement. I think it's a really fun project and I think it really will be something. I like that there's the standard, um, the place to start and then that there's also a staying factor. So it'll be something that people can continue to talk about and grab attention, I think for a nice long time. Yeah. And it can, you know, sort of bring people out to businesses, but then also like if we, if we do add additional events to the calendar, you know, to help, you know, sort of be something that that works with those other things as well depending on how long we're leaving them out um you know if we're doing movie nights in august september say you know and they're still out there you know for people to take pictures with or, or come and see um and you know I'll, I'll screen share the agenda again um just so that folks can see it but the other i you know idea that that was sort of discussed last time was doing some sort of ticketed food crawl um as we do for clark street um, they have taco crawl. Um, and we had talked at one point about doing, you know, something around samosas or something, you know, that's portable small bites that, that, can, you know, can get people into, you know, as many as 10 or 12 restaurants to, to sample different ones. Um, and the value in doing events like that is, you know, people end up, you know, going, going into restaurants and trying food from restaurants that they might not otherwise have tried. And that was the number one piece of feedback I think that we had from participants in the taco event that we did on Clark um, was the people, you know, it's, it's discovery of new restaurants um, because it gets people in and trying the food. Um, can everybody see uh, the agenda? I just pulled the screen share back to mine. Um, so we're just waiting on Pete to come back. He's checking out the uh, Tuk Tuk dimensions across the street. I do think the base adds another foot to it too, which will uh, lift it up a little bit. Well, that's bit good more. to know. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's the length of it is about roughly 100 some inches. I didn't get like 110 inches maybe. The height is 74 inches, including the canopy. And then it's the width, including the edge of the mirrors is about 51 inches. Yeah, so that four feet was kind of not not too far off. Yeah, all right. Good to know. Four, four feet. Well, you were at seventy-four. 
You said four feet high, right? I did, and the base is a foot, so that would put it at like five feet high. And if so, if we're looking at six feet to kind of boost it up a little bit, would be perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the idea is that we're not we're not doing the entire like body of the tuk tuk. It would just be the front of it, so that people could like be in it and take pictures. Right. Okay. But you want? I mean, if you stood next to it, it's you know I'm not a tall guy, and it's still you know it's like about the same. Well, whatever. You get the idea. Yeah, exactly. You want people to kind of you want it to be comfortable, right? Like the place for the kids to be able to come up over the window, a place for tall people to kind of not have to scrunch down too much to be able to get into the front window. Um, Melissa, so honestly, take if you get a chance, just go over here. So it's right here on the bottom. You can walk in and take a look at it. It's pretty cool. I will. I will. Yeah, you should. So, all right, great. Well, I will take this information then and we'll just try to revise that to see what we can get done to make those a little truer to size. I'll come out and get photos and uh, we'll get started on things. Great. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Um, so Tuk Tuk event we talked about, um, movie nights, we'll, we'll back up to that one while we're in the events category. Um, so uh, Urshad, I think we had spoken last week about um, your, your connection maybe being able to get us licensing, um, but we need to identify which movies we want to try and do and then pick some dates uh, so that we can get that sort of moving as far as, as trying to make that happen. I think we were looking at, at August and September, um, maybe Friday, Saturday nights. Yes, I, and you said the last one was a, a success, so maybe we should target, you know, around the same time. Yeah, and that was, so that was like September 11th and 12th that we did. All right, so maybe I'll, I'll pick some some of those September weekend days. Like, I don't know that we want to mess with Labor Day because it's a holiday and a lot of people are gone, but maybe some of those subsequent, uh, some of those subsequent weekends, Fridays and Saturdays, if we pick, you know, three or four movies, um, you know, we want to do some family friendly stuff and 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 some of the international films. We you know we got a good a turnout when we did in the Heights and um, Ryan, the last dragon, but the number one piece of feedback that I was hearing from attendees was that they really wanted, they, they, were, they were like, can you please do Bollywood movies next time? Like, this would be really great. It's not something that's happening in other neighborhoods. Um, and the, the bottleneck there had been licensing. Um, so I think, you know, I have the list that everyone sort of generated last year when we were putting together those movie nights of, you know, sort of broad appeal, um, you know, Bollywood films that would be, you know, interested, inter interesting to, to a diverse audience. Um, Urshad, I'll send you that list and, and some dates and we can uh, reach out to your, to your contact about um, trying to get rights and get those scheduled. Because um, the movie nights are, are pretty easy to pull off um, logistically um, compared to um, the Tuk Tuk thing, which I think is gonna be really interesting, but I think movies will be pretty easy to put together. Avi, thanks for joining us. I saw you just logged on. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I'm driving. I'm gonna have my son hold the phone so I could be, uh, I could listen and also could vote uh, when you need me to. Oh, great, thanks. Um, we, we do have a quorum. Um, we actually just voted to move forward on um, the Tuk Tuk art installation uh, project that Pete had proposed last time. Um, so we're talking through the, the rest of the uh, special event ideas. Um, it sounds like we're gonna look at September weekends for some more movie nights. Um, okay. So similar to last year, I'll reach out to Republic Bank um, about using their space again. Um, but we can move forward with that because the budget for each one, it's usually like $400 to get the rights and then like $1,200 to rent equipment if we if we go that route, um, plus whatever we spend on um, promotion for each one. Um, okay. So we can do, you know, three, four, six movie nights, however many you want to do for not that much money. Um, but we do need to get rights and plan accordingly. 
Um, so that's that. Urshad and I will follow up uh, in between now and next meeting on that. Um, and then the next idea was Samosa Stroll. Um, so the idea behind that would be that it would be a ticketed um, thing. So we'd, rec we'd recruit, you know, 10 or 12 restaurants to sign up to provide, um, you know, some sort of like small bite. It could be samosas, maybe it's something else um, that, you know, each participant would, you know, get, you know, one th a thing from each restaurant. So, you know, maybe one, one dumpling, one samosa, one something to, to sample from each place. And the idea is that, you know, people sign up for this and then they come to all the different restaurants um, and they try stuff from restaurants they may not have otherwise tried before. So it, it gets people out, it gets people into the restaurants. Um, and I think when we did it for Clark Street, you know, each restaurant got, Anna, do you remember how much, you know, we paid for each, because each of them had to make a hundred of whatever based on how many we people we had signed up. So we paid them for, you know, a hundred tacos. Um, and then people that signed up for them, the event. Yeah. We gave them a hundred dollars. Yeah. A dollar okay. per ticket. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think the big question is, you know, do we think that's something that restaurants would sign up to participate in um, on Devon if we did it? Because, you know, it's, it's definitely something that we sort of have a playbook for and could promote. Um, but it doesn't make sense to do if, if there's not interest on the part of businesses. I think maybe Cindy reach out to businesses to promote it on a busier weekend so we can yeah. have those customers come back mm -hmm. or, or even just have 10 restaurants just pass these out. Okay. Um, maybe Janae, there's somebody else can come up with better ideas for restaurants. The Clark Street event we did was a Thursday afternoon and we had how many participants do we have, Anna? About 150. Okay. And um, re uh, restaurants, for the most part, do not like to do it on a busy day or on a weekend because they're already busy on those days. So they rather use uh, do days where it's not so busy, and that's why we chose Thursdays. Uh, but Tuesdays have always have also worked if they're open, obviously. Yeah. We're closed on Tuesday, so Tuesday definitely won't work. Maybe not. Thursdays may be better then. Monday, Mondays or yeah, I mean, I guess all I'm saying is like we would try to steer away from weekends or days where there would be more foot traffic or more people out eating. I'd like to. What add if we structured? Sorry. What if we structured it where we just gave stuff away rather than you know strolling, but like passed it out outside to people walking by. Sorry, Melissa, go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. I wanted to give your question room um, for feedback. But we have, uh, we've participated in a few different restaurant crawls in a few different areas. And much to Anna's point, the goal is really to try to have it kind of be like a way to attract an audience and, and foot traffic to the district on a, a night that's definitely not busy. And so we have seen you know, to her point, success on Mondays, Wednesdays, sometimes restaurants will open on days they don't normally open. Um, so you can kind of work around that and plan however you want to do it um, for maximum success. But the goal really trying to be to get more people out there at a time they wouldn't normally be has been important. Anybody have any feedback? I mean, I, I think it's a great idea to just bring people out. I know uh, uh, the other guys, yeah, I forgot his name, but they, they did a whole bus thing where they drove everybody around, right, Cindy? What what was that? Um, a bus thing, I'm trying to think. I, it was I, Westridge. I mean, Westridge did something. I forgot the guy's name that used to be the, the manager for uh, Westridge. They had a whole restaurant crawl where they hopped in a bus and drove around. So I think I that was before been, Cindy's that time. That was before my time. Sorry. So Go ahead. That was that was Eden. And what they did was they did like a progressive meal where they put people on a bus and they went one place for an appetizer and then one place for a entree and one place for dessert or what or whatever. But which is which is not a bad idea. However, they limited it to like 15 or 20 people. Our hope is to get more than that. And the goal, I think, of one of our goals of getting people um, that walk from place to place is that they pass other businesses. 
So even the businesses that are not necessarily offering a samosa are going to get people walking past their storefront that might not otherwise walk past their storefront and they can see what's there. So it's not really structured. People can go to whatever business and whatever order they want to. And then it brings more vibrancy to the street, more people walking around and they get to see what else is there. Yeah, walking is definitely the way on Devon. There's enough restaurants we can go to from one end to the other. But, just, uh, but doing it separately, wouldn't it be better, Sandy, to do it all together so you can actually talk about the restaurant or meet the person at the restaurant that can explain what he's giving? Uh, no, I mean, so first COVID. So I don't think we want to promote large groups like that. Um, second, what we found is when we do it on Clark Street with the tacos, the business owner is the person who's there anyway. And they do tell people who walk in the door, this is what they're getting and this is what they do. You know, we encourage them to give out a menu so that people can come back and know what else they have to offer and that kind of stuff. And, and people don't all come out at the same time, right? So we have, we have some people who would start at four when we would start it and we would have some people who would start at six and just run around for an hour because that was, you know, the amount of time that they had to, to get to all those different tacos, 17 tacos in an hour. We've seen it done. I think the in biggest 17... problem we're having right now. Oh, sorry, the biggest go ahead. We, the biggest problem we're having right now is the vaccination issues um, for restaurant owners. And um, that is something that I hope is on the agenda to discuss today. It is. Yeah, and Janae, okay. this is not a, this is not a, the, the vaccination issue is not an issue for something like this because this is technically a carry out. So you're not, you're not having people come in and sit down, right? They're, they're coming in, they're getting their samosa, they're getting their menu, they're getting their spiel, whatever it is, and then they're going. So that's, that's why this kind of works during COVID is because you're not inviting them to come in and sit down and... Yeah. Understood. Yeah. What like, you know, time of the year, date range, you know, would this make sense to do? Um, Cause that's, that's one of the biggest things is, you know, we're trying to nail down event calendar for the year for, for our PBA, just for our own, you know, organizational, uh, you know, or stuff, but also so that we can promote these things through Silverman. Um, we're trying to make sure that that we give them dates for everything that we're that we're doing so that they can coordinate PR efforts accordingly. Um, Cindy, what if we thoughts? did it like a day before movie night and that way we yeah, could promote could the movie good. night too? I like that. So September we're thinking. Yeah, I would do it every time we do a movie night or, you know, if it's not a samosa, maybe something else and uh, do it a day or two before that so we can promote both. Great. I'm just going to throw this out here, but... Um, is there any interest in partnering with the chamber on this? Um, potentially, I, I've, I've reached out to um, Larissa at Westridge a, a couple of times trying to get a sense of what their schedule is, is shaping up to be, particularly as they're doing the, um, the Alfresco pop-up plaza stuff. And, and when I heard from her last week, I guess they were still waiting on their events committee to meet and, and, and set forth a schedule for their stuff. Um, so they didn't have dates yet. Um, you know, certainly we'd welcome the opportunity to, to work with them on promoting it and getting restaurants signed up for sure. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the big thing for us right now is just getting dates on the calendar so that we can plan for promotion. I wanted to just also uh, to manage expectations uh, before everyone, like, I don't know if this is something that can be done before every movie, just because it's a lot of work. So my suggestion is that we will try to do one this yeah. year. And depending on what, how it goes, then maybe we can think about doing it twice. Uh, but I don't think this type of event um, is something that we can do, you know, like, two weekends in a row or like twice, you know, I'm not sure how many movies we're thinking about, but um, from Taco Crawl, the experience, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work, it's very time consuming. So it's not something that can be done several, several times. So yeah. maybe we can do one time this year and in 2023, depending on how it goes, then we can start planning about 
you know, like, oh, we, I think we can do, we it, do it a couple time. times. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I like the idea of, of sort of matching it up to when movies are going on, because then, um, you know, that's something that's easy to sort of get the word out, like come on Thursday to like sample all this different food. And then Friday and Saturday, like we're doing movies. I would, I would also like to add to Anna's concern for those of us that have been around for a while dealing with the businesses on Devon Avenue, we know that they do not have the best follow through. So getting businesses to agree to participate is one step and on Devon, getting them to actually participate is another step. And even if we have them sign a contract on on Clark Street, we have them sign a contract saying that this is what they agree to do. We'll do that on Devon. We just have to make sure that the day of they actually follow through. And we're gonna, I'm sure need your help with that commissioners. Yeah, that should be fine. I think if we go reach out to them and then follow up a day before, a couple of days before, and then yeah. the day of, but we just gotta make sure we're on top of it. it might be several times, Rashad. Yeah, that's what I said, like three days in a row. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't I don't have a we don't have a budget drafted for this yet. I just sort of wanted to see how everybody, you know, felt about it before we before we get further down the road of of putting together a, an actual proposal. Um but it it sounds like folks are are kind of amenable to to looking into this further and maybe trying to to do this in in September as 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 we're getting closer to to doing some of those movie nights. Um, so maybe Anna and um, Melissa, like we can huddle up and you know put together the list of what's needed for that and and bring it back for the February meeting. Does that sound okay to everybody? Happy to do that. And I really do like the way you guys are thinking about being able to maximize the promotional elements because you can kind of be able to just really promote a couple of things with the same efforts. And I think that that'll help you leverage both events for greater success. So happy to connect, Cindy. Great. All right. So that's not a voting item. We'll we'll bring that back in February. I, I stuck a, a placeholder on here uh, for Holy in the spring because um, we we did get a question that came through Silverman uh, where I think one of the local publications had asked if Devon was doing anything around that holiday. And we, you know, as of now, the answer is no, but if, if any commissioners are aware of, of stuff that's going on that we, you know, could support or promote, um, definitely, you know, let us know. And maybe that's something that we can look at for 2023. Um, yeah. Anybody have anything or any thoughts to share on that? If we can get an event going where we're throwing a bunch of colored powder at each other, I'm all in. I want to do that. That would be the best party in Chicago. So, so yes. Yeah, I vote. yeah it's, it's such a short timeline. It's probably a next year thing. Um, but That would be so great. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And Devon Avenue would just burst in color. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Um, I think that's I think that sort of finishes out the the events and dates um section of this. So I'll I'll be following up with folks as as described earlier. Um so anyone who's you know, Melissa, if if you you know are good, feel free to take off. I think we're gonna circle back to approval of minutes and doing some of these other things um but we appreciate you being here and we'll be in touch thank you have a good evening yeah you too all right um so what's up pete oh no this is jay Uh, i was just saying goodbye oh thanks jay what's up uh it looks like holy's on march 18th yeah it's early you don't think we can get it done this year I don't, I don't know that we could, and part of it's, you know, because it, 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 there could still be snow on the ground. Right. Um, But I mean, I, I don't have like a plan for that. You know, where does it happen? Where are we sourcing materials from? How are we advertising? Cause we're really only talking about maybe a month and a half to plan at best. So I, Mm -hmm. I think that's probably too short of a timeline. We could have a Chicago holy, which means our own date. (laughs) 
We could just, it doesn't have to be March 18th. It could be in the middle of the summer. Sandy, you're muted. Is somebody else trying to say something? It sounds like somebody cut out. Um, but anyway, um, I, I think I think it's not enough time to try and, and do something with it this year, but I, I think it's definitely something worth looking at for 2023. Um, because it is, you know, it's something that is unique to, to this particular community on Devon, like no other neighborhood is doing it. Um, it's early enough in the year so that weather may be a concern, I think is, is the biggest challenge. But I think if we, if we start on it in the fall um, or late summer, um, it could be something that we're able to pull off. Um, so just something to think about um, to keep in mind as we're planning events for next year. Um, so with that, um, I do wanna go back to approval of the minutes from November. Um, those were sent around uh, in the email that went out on Thursday or Friday. Um, does anyone wanna make a motion? Fine, I'll motion to approve the minute. Somebody want a second? I second. I said I second. Great, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye, Pete. All right, one, two. Nobody's paying attention. No, <laughs> I, I got two votes in favor. Or shot, are you in favor? Yeah, 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 I'm in favor. Yeah. All right. So we got three. I think there's six folks on the call. All Yay, six in more. favor. Anyone? Anyone? I approve, Janine. Thank you. All right. I'm going to call that approved. Six in favor. Um, social media we talked about. Um, I did want to give just a quick update on replacement of the lights. Um, uh, Pete and I talked about this a little bit before. Um, you know, we approved it uh, earlier last year. The check has been cut. Uh, we are just waiting on um, our vendor to uh, order the items um, that are being sourced from China. Um, we are hoping that those will arrive and be ready for installation this spring uh, before the summer um, starts to pick up. So. Um, it's in the works. Um, I don't have a definitive timeline because everything's kind of at the mercy of supply chain right now, but it is going to be moving forward as far as we are aware. Um, so thanks for, for voting to approve that um, earlier or at the end of 2021. Um, so new lights will be coming. I don't have a certain date for you yet as to when, but it is something that we're working on. Um, so that's my lighting update. Pigeon abatement and signage. Um, on signage, I am still trying to get um, the signs translated. Um, you know, we've we've had folks that have been able to give us the the translation. The big bottleneck that we're in now has been the sort of the graphic design piece of it. So, like, we have the translations for Arabic and Hindi, but we need somebody that can actually write it on the signs in in Photoshop so that they can be printed. Um, so I'm waiting on one company that I've used before for this sort of work when I worked in the suburbs. Um, they're preparing a quote for me for doing that. Um, so I, I was hoping I'd have it by today. I don't yet. Um, but once that's done, um, we'll, we'll probably move those forward. We'll get bids from Sign America and uh, a couple of the other vendors that we use so that we can deploy those signs uh, in business windows and in planting areas come spring. Uh, it doesn't make sense to do it now when it's snow season, but once the weather warms up, we want to be ready to roll those out. Um, and I think we'll still be able to. So I just wanted to give the update that I have been working on it. Um, SPIF grant rollout. Um, the Devon Western TIF District um, is going to be open for uh, the, the SPIF program applications. I, I've talked about this with a, a few of you. Um, but if anyone basically is looking at doing any larger um, upgrades or renovations to their building, this is a grant opportunity um, that you should definitely take a look at. 
um, because it can fund up to 90% of your project, depending on the scope and, and some of the eligibility rules. Um, all of the Devon SSA is within this TIF. Um, so this applies to pretty much everybody here. Um, it's run through um, Summer Corps and the City Department of Planning and Development. Um, so they do a webinar every time they're opening up one of these. Ours opens in February. So you have throughout the month of February to apply. Um, you have to provide um, you know, architectural information and, and contractor quotes and everything. But um, if you get it, it's, it's just for Devon and Western. Um, so it's a, it's a smaller pool of potential competitors versus the, the larger city DPD grant program. Um, you could apply for both. Um, I'm sure some people will, um, but you are only competing against Devon for this one versus competing against the whole city for the bigger DPD grant. Um, what was that grant? The, what, what I, my computer froze. So there's, there's two Not grant the space, opportunities the other that are open right now. Yeah. So the, the Department of Planning and Development. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? Now I can. Okay. So there's the, the Chicago recovery grants that are going through uh, Department of Planning and Development. Um, that's, you know, post COVID recovery money for similar scope, right? So what they're calling like transformative um, commercial or mixed use developments in the city. So that could be new construction, it could be renovations of existing buildings. Um, and that doesn't have any kind of again. geographical okay. restrictions on it. I'll send yeah. this around again to you, Pete. Yeah. Um, but there's the next well? I will. Yeah, I'll send that to you. The SPIF one, I yeah, I, I'm gonna call. The SPIF grant, if I could just add in, the SPIF grant is 150 max. Yeah. Um, there is a webinar, I'm being told by my staff, February 2nd. on February 2nd, if you need any more information on SPIF. Is, is, there, a Thank cap, you. is there a cap for the other one? For the, the, the Chicago Recovery Grant, um, there's sort of two tracks. There's a, one for grants of $250,000 or less. Um, the deadline for that one is uh, January 31st. Um, and then there is sort of a separate track for grants of up to $5 million. Um, and, and you can apply for either depending on what you're looking to do, but it is gonna probably be more competitive because it's citywide. Um, and there are webinars for both. I'll put that in the email that I'll send out to folks. Um, Cause as, as Alderman Silverstein mentioned that the SPIF rollout usually includes a webinar. So there is one coming up for specific to Devon and Western, but the, the previous ones that they've done for prior TIFs um, those are all on YouTube on the DPD page. So if you want to watch like one of the previous ones, the information doesn't really change much from month to month. Um, so I'll find the link to the January one and send that around if folks want, don't want to wait for the next one. Um, is, there a, is there a lottery on this or is the first one for serve? How does it work exactly? For SPIF, it's typically, you know, it, it depends on how many people apply for it within the TIF that's open. Um, so if, if they have more people apply than dollars to give out, they'll do a lottery for within that TIF. Um, that's typically how it works for the Chicago recovery plan, uh, program. I, Sandy, do you remember, I don't, I don't know if they're doing that as lottery or just based on some sort of other evaluation criteria. They haven't really said because the program's so new. And I, I think it is, um, it's based on, uh, criteria and it's, um, there's three different application deadlines. So, and if you if you apply for the first deadline, which I think is January 31st, if you apply before the first deadline and you don't get selected in that round, you stay in for the next round, which is March 5th, I think. March I don't 10th, exactly, I think. But yeah. So um, you need to you need to be a property owner. It's kind of like SPIF, but it's not geographically um, specific. So, but yeah. it's, it's a, it's a reimbursable grant. So you have to outlay the money like you would with SPIF and you can get refunded up to 75% like with SPIF. So you need to be able to have the revenue to do the work before you get reimbursed from the um, grant. So you yeah. can actually build a new building and be reimbursed for it? Under the DPD grant, yes. Under SPIF, no. SPIF doesn't do new construction. But the Chicago Recovery Grant is, it, you could build a new building if you wanted to. And you could double dip to both of them? They, this is another one where that question got asked a couple times in the webinar about the DPD Recovery Grant. 
and they were like, well, yeah, we haven't prohibited it, but like, you know, so I guess it's sort of a, you know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take kind of situation. Like you could apply for both and, you know, maybe get one and not the other or vice versa. Um, so I, if they're not prohibiting you from applying for both, I'd say, yeah, go ahead and apply for both. If you've got a project that's ready to go. So let me ask you this BPD, uh, the application, you need to have plans and blueprints and everything already ready by January 31st. Yes. They want shovel ready projects. Um, and they want to see that you have site, you know, site control is preferred, but not required. And site control could be, you know, that this is a building or a piece of land that you own, or it could be a building or a piece of land that you have a lease for. Um, but if, it, if, you know, if neither of those is true, if you have like an LOI or if you're, you know, negotiating for a property and, and have something from the landlord attesting to that fact, like they'll even consider that as part of their site control preferred for that one. For, for SPIF, you have to either have a lease or own the building and it has to be an existing building. It can't be new construction. Right, right. I've had, I've had SPIFs before uh, about 10, 15 years ago. So I know about that, but the DPD sounds very interesting. Yeah, that's a new one. Um, so I'll I'll send both of these around. Let me ask you: If we don't have enough time to get get it in for January, you think there's another deadline in March? There is another deadline in March. March 10th is the second deadline. And then they said in the webinar that they're gonna they're planning to have like another one sometime in the summer, but they haven't said when that's gonna be. And I think it's gonna depend but if on you how apply many people now, apply. You already in for the summer. If you apply now, it just carries on. You don't have to reapply, right? That's my understanding. From one, if I if I could add something from my contact at DPD, um, they would rather you take your time and and uh, submit a complete application as opposed to rushing it to meet that deadline in January. Yeah, I see. One one more thing. Do you know anything about this uh, back to business that we applied for? They don't pretty. Much, I mean, I applied in November, and you don't hear anything from them at all. Uh, and all they say is that log in and check, and it's always the same status. Yeah, and that's that's a state program. Um, we've heard that from a lot of people. They because when they rolled the program out, they said like, "Oh yeah, you'll hear before the end of the year," and that's that's not been what's been happening for folks. Um, I'll I'll follow up with you, Avi, on that. Um, my colleague Sherry is, has been sort of the, the main point of contact for a lot of these bigger grants, um, and I think she's got a contact at the state um, that might be able to get some information on. But I, I this is not unique to you um, by any means. It's been a slow process on the state side, um, so I, I'll see what we can find out. Okay. So, so it is not like they, they're pretty, they're still, it's still ongoing. It's, they haven't stopped it. They're just slow. My understanding is that they're still processing them. I think. Okay. Fair enough. Thank so, you. I appreciate Yeah. If you could just send me a link about the DPD, I'll, I'll be very interested. I'll send that email to everybody um, with you. the information about both SPIF and the, the DPD Chicago Recovery Grants. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, so that's the end of like the update items. Um, under new business, I actually have two uh, BIP applications that were submitted. So I'll go ahead and pull up those. Both of them are for signs. Um, so the uh, address for that second one is wrong. Shoot, that's that's on me then. Um, what is the address okay. for that? I think it's 2555. I think, yeah. I, I think that was just a typo when I was putting this in. But let me get these up. Because both were both were signs. Yep, Rafia is twenty five fifty five. Um, so this one was an electric um, channel letter sign uh, is what he's proposing. Um, so he's completed the application. Landlord has signed off on it, um, and we'll go to his quotes and drawings here in a second. I don't see the landlord signature. Is it on there? Um, because this one, I he sent it to me again. Uh, so I think I've just got to update the, because uh, this was VJ's building, I believe. Yeah, I have another version of this where VJ did sign. I've got two PDFs floating around. But I will show the, the quotes and drawings here. So he is quote number one for 
about 4,000, a little over 4,000 with tax. And I thought this one had the drawing. And then Sign America bid uh, 7,300. Oh, here's here's the version of it with VJ's signature. Um, so that's all complete. Here is the drawing because I know he sent me one. Hang on. Oh, he sent it as a. I'm not sure if this will open. All right. So here's here's the the rendering of what this is going to look like as channel letters just above the door. Um, so it really is just the sign, um, but it is electric. So there are electric permits that are involved. Um, but uh, yeah, does anybody need to see the quotes or the application or any of that again? You, any idea what color that's supposed to be? Or is it? Yeah, let me look and see if it said in the, in the quote it may have. Channel lettering, 72 wide by 24 high. Facelift channel letters, splash mount for install standard vinyl. Uh, letters will be black. Will show as perforated black during the day and white at night is what they said. Looks good to me. Me too. All right, does somebody want to make a motion? I motion to approve. I'll second since no one else is. All right, all in favor? Yes. All right, Abby. I Pete. All right, great. Um, and then the next one. Um, so this is. Um, a new restaurant called Sheba at 2510 West Devon. Um, so here's one of the quotes for 5,700. And here is the rendering of the, what the proposed sign is gonna look like. So again, I think just lit channel letters on the brick facade. Um, and they included colors on this one, which was nice. And then here's the second. Um, the second quote that was provided. And here's a third quote, I think. Oh, because I think he, he also quoted for some masonry work that he was looking to do as part of this as well. Um, so They're gonna be quote. doing granite work, like kind of like the Hura. Oh, okay, cool. And then here's the completed application. So yeah, new sign, uh, granite addition, granite facade, and then the, the lit sign, for the electrical. How much are we giving him? Um, so the he'll probably max out um, based on the the amounts for the masonry work plus the sign because um, the the remember the maximum rebate amount is five thousand um, so fifty percent or five thousand whichever is higher so he's probably going to hit that five thousand because he's including masonry as well. Uh, so five grand. Yeah. I'm trying to get the drawing back up. There it is. Any questions or anybody want to make a motion? Motion to approve. All right. Give a second. I'll second. Everybody's sleeping. I know. Yeah, I think somebody's got some. Give him Something's the 5,000. Let's go. He wants to beautify Devon. All right. All in favor? I, we'll I, I, a I, in a I, I am favor. Pete, right. Right. thank you for waking me up, Avi. Anytime. Great. All right. Thanks, everybody. We got that done. I'll get back to the agenda. So we're done with BIPs. Thank you. Um, the other item from new business, um, sort of a continuation on, on some, of the, um, some of the discussion during the month of December about bulk purchasing of COVID tests um, for distribution to businesses. Um, I left it on here. I'm not sure if it's still, you know, as urgent or relevant given that, you know, they're supposed to be covered by people's insurance now, but I wanted to leave it on here. 
um, if that's something that folks still want to investigate or pursue um, as part of sort of COVID response for SSA 43 as a, as a whole. Um, so the I'll open up. supposed to be sending four to every household also. You have to sign up for it, um, yeah. which I think most people probably, a lot of people have probably already done, but I wanted to leave it on here. Because in addition to the four that they're supposed to be sending everybody that, that requests them, um, everyone is supposed to be able to get insurance reimbursement for up to eight per person per month now. Right. Um, but we know there's people in our community that maybe don't have insurance or, or you know have some other barriers to access. So I wanted to leave this on here. Um, well, I don't understand. Aren't there government free testing sites anyway? So I think all the sites are free yeah. testing, right? If you walked in. Then why do we need to worry about that? There, I know that there was some interest where, you know, particularly, you know, the restaurants and, and businesses that, that rely on more of the face-to-face -face stuff, like wanted to ensure test availability for employees um, coming in. Um, so I, I left it on here. I, the, the quote I think that we got was uh, $2,400 for each case um, of a couple hundred tests. So. Well, you can just go to a local cell phone store and get COVID tested. That's what I said. Okay. I think we should give more masks to people. The government is, is, is crashing down on businesses that are not uh, employees or customers aren't wearing. I got a ticket last Friday. Yeah. You did? You got a ticket, Abby? Yes, I got a ticket. Help this. Somebody called the health department. No kidding. Yep. Uh, I, I don't think we need to, the, to purchase COVID tests personally, but I'm okay if everyone else decides that we should. I think maybe we should go with, with Abby said and buy some, you know, KN95 masks and pass them out to the stores and restaurants. That might be a better help. Potentially, I mean, and, and we've done that before. Um, so, you know, we certainly could do that. Much cheaper now. Yeah. Much cheaper. Somebody quote out some KN95 mask or N95 mask. Even, we can pass even just a regular, doesn't have to be K9. You could just regular free ply, you know, a few boxes per, per, per business or something. Yeah, that, that helps. Yeah. And we, because we did leave money in the 2022 budget for um, COVID safety again, as we've done the last two calendar years. So we, we do I, have. Cindy, I still have uh, leftover stuff from last time. Do you now. really? All right. Yes. Okay. So yeah, let's maybe look into that. We'll get some more quotes um, and see about doing mass distribution again. Cindy, uh, did you mention earlier somebody wanted to talk about COVID? regulations in restaurants or what was that? About? Yeah, so I, I did have that on here and, and figured it would just sort of roll into to this discussion. I, I think I forwarded around an email that um, that was sent to, to Sandy and myself and I think Alderman Silverstein as well, um, expressing concern about COVID safety policies not being enforced or not being followed consistently at businesses on Devon. It's something that, you know, we've heard anecdotally from other folks too, but um, we also did get a pretty long email about it. Um, and so I did want to bring that to the commissioners to, to sort of talk through, you know, what can we do, you know, to, to sort of boost some of that compliance and, and get the word out that Devon's a safe place to be. Um, and I know, Janaid, you know, you shared your thoughts with me on, on some of it too, because, you know, as you're, you're somebody that's, that's following the guidelines as far as, you know, keeping masks on and checking COVID cards at the door. But we, you know, it's come to our attention that we have a lot of businesses in the district that are not doing those things. So the issue that I've been having is, 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 is I, we're checking, uh, first of all, January is the slowest month of the year. Um, it is dead on Devon. Anyhow, um, and as you guys know, uh, Devon is a, is a tourist neighborhood. So we have people coming from out of state, out of town, uh, even locals. But then when, they, when the customer comes in, first of all, it's very hard to get a customer in. When they get in, we have to ask them for their vaccination card, which is fine. That's the protocol. Now we ask them for their vaccination card. They say, we don't have it. Um, we didn't know or whatever the reason was. Um, and then we let them go. Like, you know what? We can't seat you guys. It's mandated by the city. Um, and um, we let them go. What recently been happening that when I let them go, 
they give us a call back after like 10 minutes later that this X restaurant or XYZ restaurant is allowing us to come in. You just lost a customer, you know? So I'm losing a customer instead of having customers, I'm losing them now. So this is my problem I'm having. And um, I know we have to follow the rules, which we are, but everybody has to follow the rules. Why am I the only one? Or why is a few restaurants on Divana the only ones that are following the rules? I mean, we have reviews people wrote down in our, in, our, in our Google page. Some people are appreciative of it. They're like, you know, they check, the, they, they check for vaccination. Other wrote down, no, you know, why they're checking for vaccination. They gave me a one star. So, I mean, this is a, a domino effect that we're having here. Um, especially if other restaurants on Divana are entertaining that that they don't, they're not accepting vaccination card. They don't really care. They're letting people in. I'm having a problem with that. I'm done. Thanks for sharing that. I, I do appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so there was that and then there was I've, the I've gotten complaints, Cindy, on yeah. uh, mosques and other place where the gatherings are happening where people aren't wearing masks also. They're like, hey, can somebody do something about it? Because we're going to stop coming if it continues this way. Oh, maybe the alderman should address this. Um, the rule is in restaurants that you have to wear a mask and have your vaccination card. Um, I mean, we could send inspectors out and give all the restaurants tickets like Avi got. No, don't do that. <laughs> How about the religious places, Deborah? Where, where are they getting complaints to? Um, same thing. Deborah, you know, did you send them to my restaurant? I did not send them to your restaurant. <laughs> I think most of my customers appreciate it, actually. I mean, I have to ch had to chase a few people. People can, all, and all anybody has to do is pick up the phone and call 311. Yeah, that's true. An inspector, an inspector will come out. I don't, I honestly don't think that the city is, you know, going to every single restaurant. They'll go out when they receive a complaint. Yeah. I think it's kind of a wash. I mean, there are some people that don't like it and some people that do, and it kind of works out. Right, Pete. I understand that this is a, it's a two-way thing. Some people are really appreciated. Some people are not. But if you have another bar next to you that doesn't care and in your, in your bar you are caring, then that becomes a problem. Oh, I, 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 of course, I agree with you. It's, it's irritating. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know. You, know, you understand this is what's a community place, a community business, and yeah. everybody knows each other in this community. I yeah, mean, yeah, you're right. I'm not, you're I'm, right. This is why I'm, I'm not writing anybody out, and that's not my intention here. My intention is just that everybody be on the same page. Yeah, I agree. Are we sure this that all the like, restaurants know the rule, or is this something that we need to notify them of? Everybody knows the rule, Deborah. Everybody knows. It's not like, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm um, just making sure. Okay, I, I, if maybe you want a to nice, educate them, healthy reminder. Educate them. Yeah, just yeah, educate them. That's fine. I'm okay with that. And I, I wonder too if, if you know, maybe some of it is a language barrier issue, like you know, because that's that's feedback that we've heard about a lot of the grant programs. Actually, the you know DPD reached out to me and asked, you know, what additional languages would it be helpful to translate the SPIF materials into? And I said, well, you know, let's start, you know, we've got English, we've got Spanish, that's great. They've got Chinese, not applicable here, but if we could get Hindi and or Arabic, like that would be helpful for, for SPIF outreach. And I don't, I don't know that public health has, has done that. Um, so maybe that's, you know, some feedback that we could share with them. And can I add maybe the whatever we're going to share includes the fact that some Devon businesses have already been fined? Yeah, good idea. Give, give them a scare. Of a, yeah, more of a warning, just so you know that, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah, just don't put names yeah. out there, though. No, I also don't, think not, don't mention names, but they should, they should know that people are coming out and get You should have a picture of Avi with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Avi, did you did you uh, you said you got you got fined or you got warned? No, I got a I got a ticket. I got a blue ticket. Okay, excellent. How much was it, by the way? Just want to know. I don't know. I didn't even look. Okay. Is it for was it for I no was, mask? Is that so, what that's for? I was for? so pissed off that I didn't even look at it really yet. I'll be honest with you. Well, What's you have seven days to pay that thing. Exactly. No, no, you have more than that to pay. Okay, good. What was the ticket for? 
Exactly. For for uh, some employees weren't wearing, and supposedly customers when I'm complained that uh, I'm not I'm not forcing the customers to wear masks. Oh, it was uh, not for vaccination checking. It was for masks for the mask. 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 Oh. Well, okay. Because they don't, they can't prove that I, I'm checking a customer for vaccination or not. But they could prove that I wasn't, they weren't wearing masks. Somebody had it out for you. I've heard of a few of the restaurants or stores that have gotten ticketed. You're, you're not alone, Avi. No, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not. Uh, right. I'm, I'm thinking of contesting it, but we'll see. Sandy, what were you gonna say? Thank you. I was just saying that there's quite a few that we know of that have been fined. Yeah. Do so, you know how much for, the fines are since I haven't checked? I, I don't know. I think it's 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 in the publications that they have sent out. I don't remember what the amounts were off the top of my head. I'd have to check. I don't think it was one set price. They they said anywhere from this to this. I don't know what that means even. Yeah. So maybe it varies. Hey, folks, yeah. I need to check out. Yeah, no worries. We're, we're through all the voting items on, that were on the agenda. Um, and I, I do want to be respectful of time because it's now after four o'clock. Um, so if, if anybody else, you know, has any, any pressing matters to discuss, um, you know, we, we can entertain some of that. But I, I want to be respectful of everybody's time since we are now after four o'clock. And folks need to go. I'm also I'm also checking out. I have another meeting. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks, folks. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Pete, you're muted. All right, so, so basically, we are just going to be um, uh, from the alderman's office. There'll be a letter coming out to everyone, letting them know that hey, this is the protocol, or is that what the last? Yeah, I'll I'll follow is? up with them, and I'll also reach out to CDPH and see if we can get the materials that they've been pushing out if they have that stuff available in other languages to get it in front of people because we we are aware that not everyone is enforcing the rules as they should be and we don't want to you know rat on people to 311 but we want people to follow the rules and we want it to be a fair playing field correct and that's kind of all we can do at this point so okay thank Got you for it. sharing that um Anybody else have anything before we adjourn? Nope. No. All right, thanks everybody for being here. Um, the next Thank meeting you. in February, Thank you. Um, we, we're, we've pushed it back a week again because the, the, third, the third Monday is a holiday. So I think we're on, on the following, following Monday. Everyone should have gotten a calendar invite and the websites uh, should be updated accordingly. But uh, yeah, February 28th is, uh, is Thank the you. February date. So we'll see everyone then, if not before. Thank All righty. Take care, guys. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Cindy, I... Oh, what's yeah. up, Bobby? Hi. Hi. So, so I was... I was... I was worried. Actually, I just got on to this uh, Chicago.gov regarding the, the that uh, grant. If yeah. I wanted to, let's say... If I wanted to, let's say knock down the restaurant, build a restaurant and apartment buildings on top. Is that something that would would uh, would be eligible for such a thing? Um, potentially. Um, so the the only thing that they that they don't allow under the, the Chicago recovery grant is strictly residential construction, but mixed use is allowed. Um, so if you're proposing a mixed use project, which would be like commercial on the bottom, apartments on the top, like that would be eligible. Right. Um, the difficulty is that they want to see that you've got, you know, contractor bids and, and architectural plans and everything in place already ready to go. Um, so do they need more than mind. one or is one enough? I think it's just one proposal, um, but they want to see that it's like baked and ready to be built. Ready to roll. Yeah. This and is, this is amazing. I mean, uh, <sighs> I mean, it would it would take probably for my business to be closed for a year, 
but it could be unbelievable up to they they would pay the whole thing or up to 90 percent or what did you say exactly i think it's 75 percent so you, and you would have to you would have to lay out the money initially and get reimbursed um but it's it's up to um i think a 75 percent um funding you know distribution and you um, could get a loan for this like a, they they will let you get a loan for it yeah and that's how spiff works too um because you have to front it and then get reimbursed so they they do list lender resources i think on one of the resource pages for both of those grants mm -hmm. okay okay something something to look into this sounds very interesting i mean that yeah, could be a lot of money it's an interesting program and and like i know that there's there's folks that you know, have have interest on Devon in, in both, frankly. Um, and for for program for projects under you know the the two hundred and fifty thousand, um, you could do either one. But for those bigger things, um, that would really only be the you know the larger sort of DPD pool. It's just a question of like, you know, having something there that's ready to go, which not everybody does. Right. But, I guess I it, 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 it's a period that I I don't know when was this rolled out. I guess I missed it. Whatever. It's like a week or but two I could, ago. I guess but... I could. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll send you a follow up email with with all the links for for both of Hello? those programs. I'm still here. Can you hear me? Hello. 